A new study has found EVs could prevent power outages spreading to tens of thousands of homes during emergency outages. Now, the report comes from the Australian National University and showed how a fleet of just 16 EVs charging across Canberra was able to rebalance the power during a major blackout in Melbourne earlier this year. Lead researcher Bjorn Sternberg joins us now. Dr Sternberg, thank you for your time. Now, this storm blackout occurred in February this year. It was in Melbourne. Explain to us how 16 EVs in Canberra uh, were able to achieve something in this. Yeah, so the power system in the eastern seaboard goes from South Australia to Queensland and it's all interconnected. So when there's a loss of power in Melbourne, particularly when the Luoyang coal-fired power station went offline, which is Victoria's largest generator, um, we then need to find more power across the eastern seaboard. Um, and so we had 16 electric vehicles plugged into the grid here in Canberra in offices or in garages of the ACT government. They noticed this drop in power supply and within seconds started to discharge power to the grid. Um, and now as only 16 vehicles, they provided a very modest amount of that power that needed to be found to rebalance the exit of the coal plant but it's a sign of the future when we'll have many more electric vehicles that can do this. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you didn't know this blackout was going to happen, but were you preparing to test an event just like that? Yeah, so we've spent years kind of preparing this technology, rolling out, there's in fact 51 electric vehicles in the ACT that are set up to do this. Um, and they have special chargers that are able to pull power out of the vehicles as well as mm -hmm. the normal charging. Um, and they've been ready for years now. Um, and thankfully, these sorts of emergencies only happen very infrequently. Um, and so this was the first time that since our vehicles have been prepared, um, that we had such a major event in the national electricity system. While it was happening, though, I mean, were you worried under this test that you know, things could have actually been made worse by them? No, no, not at all. We'd done extensive testing, including of the vehicles in our lab at ANU. Um, and we were very confident that they were going to uh, do exactly what was required, which is to respond and pro inject power very quickly. And how quickly were the cars able to go from charging to discharging? Yeah, so four of the vehicles were charging at the time that the storm knocked down these transmission lines. Um, and they, within 60 seconds, stopped charging and started to discharge at their full power. Um, and there were another 12 that were idle at the time of the event and that also, within 60 seconds, started to discharge. Now, that 60 seconds is actually due to some regulations around the grid. In our lab, we were able to see the same vehicles and the same chargers provide their power with under six seconds. And would all EV models be able to do this? So currently only Japanese manufactured vehicles, Nissan and Mitsubishi, have the technology to do this. But as of next year, there's a new uh, software standard for how vehicles interact with chargers. And that's being updated uh, early next year. And that will provide um, most vehicles the capability of doing this. Now, it still requires that the vehicle manufacturer allows this to happen, in particular to provide a warranty for it to happen. Um, but there's been a lot of talk from major manufacturers like VW, Ford, um, BYD, which is the Chinese manufacturer, um, to uh, provide this service. Is there a fair bit of interest in these findings? I mean, we want to see them contribute in a positive way in events like this, but conversely, could they actually contribute to a blackout if they did continue to charge in an event like that? So the, the real twist in the story was that we had 16 vehicles discharging in these uh, garages of the ACT government. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, uh, other vehicles of the ACT government that weren't part of our project, there were 23 of those that were merrily charging throughout the whole emergency. Mm -hmm. um, and so to me, that really highlights that while the technology of, that we've been working on of vehicle to grid of discharging power from electric vehicles is fantastic, the greater emphasis now needs to be on just making sure that we don't um, have regular electric vehicles charging during these periods. Um, and a quick back of the envelope is that while power ended up being cut to 90,000 customers in Melbourne, the equivalent of that would have been to cut uh, power to stop electric vehicles charging, and you would only need 6,000 electric vehicles to have the same effect. Um, and so I really am advocating that we put in place the technologies, the standards, and also the social expectations that once every couple of years, your electric vehicle might just stop charging for half an hour because it's trying to contribute to um, the security of the national grid.